Today, I'm going to start a series when I'm teaching about Paul. He's the Torah teacher to Jews and Gentiles that are out away from Israel at the time. And it's relatively amazing because most Christian churches think that Paul was the first Christian and he told oh, people oh, that oh, the letters at the front door. Yeah. Um, something you wait. Just, um, yeah. 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 Sorry. I bought my first one. Thank you. 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 But just think of the increase here. You got well, uh, yeah. six fold. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, four fold. Oh, good. She, she's really cool. Oh, no, it's good. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. How many other people can say it. that uh, they've got a 400% a increase in audience? Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I know we're oh. recording right now. So, <laughs> what we're going to do, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm just going to set the table. All right. All right, as I was saying, he's the Torah teacher, and the Christian church thinks that he did away with the Torah. No. And that's not true. Amen. She loves. Sorry. She loves. Uh oh. Is the door unlocked? Okay. It is now. Okay. All right. So. Paul is the predominant author or writer in the New Testament. He wrote 13 books. The Christian church uses his teachings to predominantly to support the theological teaching of the Christian church today. They're taking Paul's words and they're kind of leaving the Old Testament in the back door. <laughs> yeah. okay. And Peter has an interesting statement about Paul. Second Peter 3, 14 through 16. And I will read it for you. Second Peter 13. Second Peter 3, 14 through 16. Therefore, beloved, seeing that you look for these things, be diligent to be found in him in peace, without spot or blemish, regarding the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you, as also in all of his letters, speaking in them of these things, in, in those, there are some things which are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unsettled twist, as they also do other scriptures to their own destruction. In other words, people that just stay in the New Testament, and there's a lot of Christian churches that do that, yeah. they have absolutely no idea what the Torah says, and that Paul is really teaching Torah. <clears throat> and we're going to find that out today. So let me in the letter of Paul where people have distorted what Paul is saying, doing other things, scripture where it has uh, been twisted and all it's all messed up, shows that an example of that most Christians can't give you a single example. So if you say to one of your brothers or sisters in the Lord, show me an example of what Paul was trying to teach in the Old Testament, they have no idea. The Old Testament is a is 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 a is a mystery to them. They have no clue at all. 
The apostle Saul, Paul, is a Torah scholar who sat under Gamaliel. And that's just not anybody, by the way. Gamaliel was probably the eminent sage of the Torah. And he was alive in Jerusalem right at the time that Paul was a young man and the Lord was a young man. The Lord's about three years older than Paul. And when someone wanted to send their sons to Hebrew school, they started at seven years old and they went until they were about 20. Mm -hmm. Paul's dad was a very wealthy fellow. He was the head Pharisee of Tarsus. So where would he send his son, Paul, or Saul, to learn about the Torah? He would send him to Jerusalem, right into the temple. That's where Paul was when he was between 7 and 20 years old. And he sat under Gamaliel. And they taught in a very strange way. If I had a question for the sage, I would ask my question and he would answer me with a question. He yeah. would not answer my question. He would give me a question. Yeah. And then I would have to go back to the scriptures, try to answer the question that he gave me back. And I might get one or two pieces of the one that I asked, <laughs> which would precipitate me to ask him another question. And he would answer me back with a question. And I keep going. Sooner or later, I figure out my, the answer to my original <laughs> question. That's how they talk. Yeah. A 12 year old Yeshua with his mom, Miriam, and his stepdad, Joseph, went to Passover, the feast days Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. Everybody 13 years of age or older is in Jerusalem. All of the priests of Israel are there. All the priests that are out in the country in their own synagogues? No, they're in Jerusalem. And after that particular Passover was over, Mary and Joseph headed back to Nazareth, and it came to a really serious problem <laughs> the first night out from town. They couldn't find the Lord. He's gone. He wasn't with them. Can you, they're the only two people on the planet that know who he is. They lost the Messiah for crying out loud. And they're a whole day out, which means they got to go back the next day. And then it takes them three days to find him. Where is he? He's in the temple. And what's he doing in the temple? He's teaching. A 12-year-old Yeshua is teaching. And he's got every priest in the entire country of Israel watching him do this. Gamaliel's sitting right there. And Paul's about nine or ten years old. And he's Gamaliel's star pupil. Guess where he's sitting? Right next to him. And Paul's dad's right next to there. Paul's right in between his dad and Gamaliel. And Gamaliel, they are asking questions that have stumped all of the priesthood for centuries. And Jesus has taken them to the cleaners. <laughs> they can't fathom where he is coming up with this stuff. Uh-huh. They just didn't know that he wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> Letter by letter, he wrote the book. So, Paul, when he leaves at the age of 20, from memory, he can recite the first five books of Moses. From memory. That's the mind of Paul. That's the mind that God gave him. He doesn't need the Torah scrolls with them when he's traveling. He's got it between his ears. Family oil is a heavyweight in the teaching of the Jewish world, right? Even today, he is revered today in Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the Torah teacher that followed. 
Saturday. Torah concepts. They're found in the five books of Moses. They lay the foundation how God decrees us to live our life. As David taught a couple of weeks ago, the direction that he wants us to go, or the instruction, as I say. Law is a little bit bad of a uh, bad translation. It's how God wants us to live our lives. Yeshua taught and walked the Torah as an example to mankind how God wants us to live our lives. The Torah told us what to expect when the Messiah showed up. It's right there. What the Messiah was going to do in the five books of Moses when he showed up. Hmm. And Yeshua spoke the Torah as the true meaning of it. He physically walked it and was a live example of how to live your life according to the Torah. Moses wrote God's plan for redemption, his justice, his substitutionary system, and righteousness. This is when Yeshua the Messiah taught, but the religious leaders of that day had already distorted God's rules. Okay, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And the second verse. Wow, did they distort that? Pretty easy. Because it's still being done today. It is still being done today. Deuteronomy 4, verse 2. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you take away from it, that you may keep the Torah of Yahweh your God, which I command you. So you're not supposed to add things to it or take things away. Christian church has done that. They've kind of made up their own rules and regulations depending on what denomination you're in. Okay. Wrong. The Pharisees, there was no New Testament at the time that the Lord walked around. Amen. They had added a bunch of rules. I will give you an example. They had 153 rules regarding the Sabbath. Okay? As to what you can and can't do on the Sabbath. They came into conflict. Because they didn't realize that Yeshua, the Lord of the Sabbath, was standing right dead in front of them. Yeah. If anybody knew the Sabbath, it was Yeshua. Okay? And it caused conflict. So much conflict that they wanted to take him out. Amen. Because it went against the pharisaical teachings and the Sanhedrin teachings of the day. He was a problem to their religion. Yeah. Because when you add or subtract from the word, you no longer have the word of God. Mm -hmm. you got your own book. And now you have a separate religion that you created. Mm -hmm. What man created, not what God said. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's still going on today. Big time. Big time. The Pharisees had added man-made rules to the Torah and subtracted what they didn't like. This <laughs> made it a man-made system to give the Pharisees power over the people. To have a situation where people have power over other people in the world today. Yeah. Some of them are in government. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in positions of authority with religion. As man-made systems always do. Mm -hmm. 
Someone wants to be the tap dog and oh, have yeah. everybody underneath them. Oh, yeah. Is that going on in the world today? Every day. Yes, it is. That's their father. Mm hmm. Yes, who they're got all that little nice stuff from. Mm -hmm. The other guy. We don't even mention his name. I don't want to give him credit. Yeshua said, You prefer the precepts of man to the precepts of God. You do not teach what Moses taught. Paul will teach us the basics of the teachings of Abraham. One, what is faith and what is not faith? Two, what is the commandments and what is not? Or the instructions? Or the directions? What are the jots and tittles, the scribes, special marks, the small letters, the long letters, the punctuation? Those jots and tittles have meaning themselves <clears throat> apart from the words that they are punctuating. Yes. And he'll teach that the covenants that God enters into are eternal. They don't change. He'll teach the characteristics of God. Key words, truth, justice, grace, mercy, salvation, redemption, sanctification, and atonement. He will use the definitions here for the works that are going to come, and he's getting them right out of Moses, the prophets, and the writings. He's taking the Old Testament and enlightening what God's plan for everybody is. He's not changing these definitions to what the church has changed them to. Mm -hmm. He's coming right out of the book. Yes, he is. He has that kind of mind. He doesn't need to carry the scrolls with him. He's got the scrolls between his ears. Yeah. That's the mind that God gave Paul. He is phenomenal. He'll point out the differences between clean and unclean, pure and impure, holy and profane. His purpose is to have us follow and do the great story of redemption, the story of Joseph being brought out of Egypt, sharing the stories of redemption, in Yeshua Messiah, he takes the stories and it's God's way of showing the redemption of Joseph. He was in prison and God redeemed him. And where did he put him? In the second position in all of Egypt. Israel had sinned and fallen into decay, into slavery, and he redeemed them through the Red Sea, over the Mount Sinai. The same thing with Yeshua. Yeshua came teaching absolute truth, lived it as a live example to the point where the people who were making the rules to have power over the people put him on the cross. But he was supposed to be there anyway. Paul will use the complete statement of Torah, which to the untrained ear will seem hard, like Peter said. If you haven't read the five books of Moses, you have absolutely no idea, and Paul is going to confuse you horribly. You're going to think that he is pulled away from what you've got in the New Testament, and he's not. He's linking the two together. But Paul doesn't want to leave anything out. 
That's why Peter said what he said. It's hard to understand. If you haven't been in the Torah, if you've not been in the five books of Moses, you've got a problem. Because what Paul is saying in the books that he wrote are going to, where do you get that? I don't think he's right. Rumor that Paul was teaching against the law got back to Jerusalem. And when Paul came back to Jerusalem, they had a big powwow. It's in Acts 15, the whole chapter. And the head apostle in Jerusalem would be James, the half-brother of the Lord. And they had a big powwow. And Paul says, I am teaching Torah. And there was a big row about this. And he said afterwards, he says, there's four guys that have finished their Nazarite vow. They had to go to the temple. They had to shave their hair off and stuff like that. He says, Paul, you go with them. You pay their fees like that. And you do the same as they did so that people will see that you are observant in the law. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he got in after he did that, he got into argument with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. <clears throat> Such a row came up that the Romans came down and they arrested him and they were going to take him to that and he deferred. He says, I'm a Roman citizen. Yeah, You take me to Caesar and we'll let Caesar decide. He was arrested after he had shown that he was faithful to the, the law and the teaching. Sure was. <laughs> And bought some time so he could write some more books for us, <laughs> like Romans. <laughs> Under time. Yeah. Because he was teaching that Yeshua was Messiah. That's really what caused the issue. And it's right in the Torah. You can see the Torah says what the Messiah is going to do when he shows up. He is Yeshua ben Joseph, the suffering. He is Yeshua ben David. Mm. He's the king. Look at the first chapter of Matthew. There's the genealogy. He's directly descended from David. And he's Yeshua ben Elohim, mm. Yeshua, the son of God. That caused some problems. <laughs> that caused some problems. <laughs> that guy is killed. The rumor was he was teaching against the law. But Paul taught the law, the prophets, and the writings. So, Romans, the Romans, here we go. First chapter. Books not being nice in there, but first chapter, first four verses. Here we go. Paul, a servant, servant's a bad word right there. It's actually bond servant yeah. of Yeshua Messiah called to be an emissary set apart for the good news of God, which he promised before through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was born of the offspring of David, <clears throat> according to the flesh, who was declared to be the son of God with power according to the Ruach of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Yeshua Messiah our Lord, through whom we are received by faith of the office of emissary for obedience among all nations, for his name's sake, among whom you are also called belonging to Yeshua Messiah. The word servant there is bond servant. So when you are reading the 
Ten Commandments, the actual Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20. When you're done with Exodus 20, Exodus 21 teaches you the law of the bondservant. The very next thing is the law of the bondservant. And In Revelation, the first chapter in Revelation, I'll read you the first verse there because it shows up again. Revelation what? One. Okay, yeah, it says, This is the revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which God gave him to show his. Servants. The word in Greek there is doulos. Doulos is a bond servant. The things which must happen soon, which he sent and made known by his angels to his bond servant John. <clears throat> the disciples all were bond servants. What's a bond servant? When you go back over to Exodus 21, it tells you exactly what a bond servant is. I'm a, I'm a servant of my master. He's given me a wife. He's given me kids. He's given me authority and stuff like that. And so when my are you saying B O N or B O N? Bond servant? Bond. B O N D. Oh, bond. <laughs> bond servant. And if I choose not to leave his service, I, that I love the master enough, he takes me down to the gate. I put my ear up against the gate post and he drives them all through it and puts a ring in there. And I am given the signet ring of the family. Mm. I can enter into contracts and the master has to honor those contracts. And I am a bond servant for the rest of my life. Mm. Totally committed to the master. The 12 disciples were totally committed to the master. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Especially Paul. If anybody knew what a bond servant was, it was Paul. And he says, now, I'm not an apostle. I'm a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just a servant. <laughs> and so, in Romans, he is teaching the things that are clean and unclean. And like I said, he appealed to Rome. So he's in Rome answering the questions that the Jews that are living in Rome, along with all the Gentiles, he's got quite a little bit of a following in there. He's under house arrest and everybody keeps showing up. He's he's got he's got traffic on a daily basis. So <clears throat> Romans one. One through seven. I'm going to keep reading in Romans here. Who was declared to be the Son of God by power according to the holiness by the resurrection from the dead, who shewed the Son of the Lord, through whom we receive the office of emissary of obedience among all the nations for his namesakes, among whom you are also called to belong to Yeshua Messiah. So, we start talking about being set free from our sins. He surrendered uh, in, in John 13, 34 through 35. 13, huh? Mark, not God. 34. A 
a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. Yes. And also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples or my bond servants if you have love for one another. What he's saying in there is the Lord's saying that all the commandments hang on those two things. What are the first four commandments? Your relationship to God. What are the last six? Your relationship to each other. Yeah. And you don't find fault with anybody. All will then know that you are my bond servants. Follow the directions after the ten words. And like I say, that's Exodus 21. It is our testimony to be bond servants of Yeshua Messiah. Do we love other <clears throat> brethren? If you're a bond servant, yes, you do. Amen. First John two. Get rid of it. Um, I'm really all over the place today. Go ahead. Seven through ten. Okay. Brothers, I'm starting in verse 7. I'm going to go down to 10, maybe 11. Brothers, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, I write a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light already shines. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness even now. He who loves his brother remains in the light and there is no occasion for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know where he's going because darkness has blinded his eyes. Come on. Well, Slap me across the face. Yeah. The person who loses his brother loves his brother, abides in the light, and there is no darkness in him. Scriptures were from Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, and the writings. There was no New Testament at this time. All period. Right. All, right. All they had was what we refer to as the Old Testament. That's true. Period. Amen. So Romans 1, 5, we're going to stay right. I think we're going to finish in Romans. Yeah, we're going to finish in Romans. Romans what? Romans 1. Back we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I can I can say that my pieces are sticking together, but they're not. I'm just not moving fast enough. Take your time, sir. Okay, there we go. The fifth verse. I'm going to read the fifth verse again. Yeshua, Messiah, our Lord, through whom we receive 
the faith and the office of emissary for obedience of our faith among all nations for the namesake, among whom you are also called to, to belong to Yeshua Messiah. We're his. Puts us in a bond servant role right there. The Torah was given to all peoples. Verse 5, to bring about an obedience of faith through all the Gentiles, the Torah teaches that it be given to all the nations, <clears throat> to the Jews first and to the Gentiles. There's no separation of peoples. That's true, sir. There's no separation of peoples here. It goes to you talk that the Jews first, and then it goes out to everybody on the planet. Period. Yeah. The Torah was given to all peoples of the earth. Romans 1 16. Yeah, let's see. 16. For I am not ashamed of the good news of Messiah because it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith to faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. If you mm -hmm. have drawn the conclusion that the law is for the Jews and not for the Christians, it comes where we're at right now, and the gospel is for the Christians and not the Jews, the New Testament's for the Christians and not the Jews. This is the current teaching, folks. That's where we are. That's where we are. The Christian church has done away with the book that was in play when the Lord was walking around. Yeah. And they have no business being in the New Testament. The Jews have no business being in the New Testament uh, because they got their own set of circumstances over there in the Old Testament. The law, the prophets, and the writings. You will distort what Paul is teaching, <laughs> period, if that's but you believe that there's a separation. He's not teaching that at all. He's teaching it that the entire book is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we who grew up in the Christian church who didn't hear anything about Torah for 45 years, like myself. Ah, so. uh, the Torah is for me, really. It's Romans 117 teaches that the righteous shall live by faith. And the whole book is in the play. The wrath of God is coming. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Really soon, by the way. Next five to seven years. Maybe, maybe before that. And we got we got a little bit. He doesn't come until the tail end of the revelation, which would be a seven year period. I don't think we've started it yet, but we're really close. And I mean really close. Just take a look at the planet right now. All kinds of blasphemy going on. That's what I was going to say. And the heat that's running it. <clears throat> Oh yeah, the other guy's running the running the, the deal. But the Christians say, "Oh, hey, I've got the grace of God, or, or I've got the grace of God. I don't need that." I can say, "Oh, look out! <laughs> look out! I don't need the commandments." I've got the grace of God. That's what's coming. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. Pure wrong. It's blasphemy. Romans 1.18 
Okay. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Is there any unrighteousness on the planet right now? Not holy smokes. Satan has not been kicked out of heaven yet. And he has seen a lot of activity up there. And he knows his days are about right there. <laughs> And he has had to quadruple his efforts, and he has done that down here. The sexual immorality all over the place, the entire planet is infected with it. Yeah. Speak out against the law and the prophets. God is in our being that we are inherently know what is good and what is evil. You were born with a sense of good and evil in you. You take God's instructions for what is good and bad, what is holy and unholy, clean and unclean, And the decision to throw it all away, this very thought will bring God's wrath on the whole world very soon, I might add. Mm. So, this is no different than the unbeliever who knows nothing of God, someone who's never heard about God at all has a sense of right and wrong with them already. It's inherent when you're born. If you say, I don't need the law or the words that God gave Moses, you're no different than someone who doesn't know God or believe in his creation. That's what Paul is trying, is teaching in his intro to the book of Romans. This whole just, he's, he's teaching Torah. Here. Torah, Torah. Torah, Torah, Torah. Not where the Japanese used to be. <laughs> <Over there. laughs> but I'll conclude with Romans 1, 22 through the end of the chapter. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and traded the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness and the image of corruptible man. And of the birds and of the four-footed things and of the creepy things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts to uncleanness, yeah. that their bodies should be dishonored amongst <laughs> themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and oh, worship and serve the creature rather than the God. creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for the women changed the natural function into which is against nature. Like also the men leaving natural and function of the woman and burning the less for one another, men doing what is inappropriate with men and receive themselves oh, the due penalty of their error. Woo. Even if they refuse to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a God reprobate mind to those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetous, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil habits, secret slanders, backbiters, hateful to God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covetous breakers, without natural affection, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them. My God. Oh, is that where we are right now? Oh, oh, do you realize yeah. that I just mm -hmm. read right there? That comes right there. out of the heart of the Torah. That's where we are. Mm -hmm. Turn to Leviticus Chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Here's the homework assignment for the week. Leviticus 17. He talks about unclean things. He talks about kosher and he talks about sexual immorality. This right here is the heart of the Torah. Right here. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 17 and 18. He starts off with what is an acceptable sacrifice in the first I'm going to say the first nine verses of 17. He is talking about what is an acceptable sacrifice. Then from verse 10 to the end of 17, he's talking about kosher. The blood belongs to God. Yeah. Blood <laughs> is the life force. Yes, yes. And there's certain ways that you have to sacrifice. So they slit the neck of the animal. So all of the blood runs out. <laughs> so you don't eat any meat that has blood still in it. Do we still do that? Have eat meat that's still got blood in it? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately we do. Yeah. If you buy a hamburger, it's still there. Okay. The blood is the sacrifice. That is the life force of whatever was killed. That blood belongs to God. Period. That's why you drain the blood. That's why the Roman guard had his pierced Lord's side. Mm. His spear went through the heart and out came three and a half gallons of blood and water. He had to drain the blood out of the Lord's body for the sacrifice mm -hmm. to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he used a Roman spear to do it. Mm. Yeah. Verse 8, uh, chapter 18, I'm going to tell you what. It talks about sexual immorality, and it goes for almost 30 verses. Yeah. And every sexual immorality is listed in chapter 18 of Leviticus. And Paul hit that in the first chapter of Romans. He hit 17 and 18. By Tom. There it is. Bringing the old and the new back together where they belong. Yes, sir. It's the heart of the Torah. And there's your assignment for the week. Spend some time in 17 and 18 to find out what Paul really was talking about right there. How far we've gotten away from where God wants us to be. And yet, his Torah, his writings, the prophets, are easy because his burden is light. And we have two examples of that. I'll leave you with this one. Luke. Let me see here. Right up at the beginning. 
Right in the first couple of verses, it's talking about two people. <clears throat> so Luke 1, is it? Luke chapter 1, it's talking about two people, starting in verse 5. And there was in the days of their <clears throat> king of Judah a certain Cohen named Zechariah from the <clears throat> course of Abiah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron. She was a Kohen too. Her name was Elisheva. And they were both righteous before God, walking blameless in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, that they had no children. Evan Cheryl was barren, and they were both advanced in years. This is mom and dad to John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cohen. That means both of them were directly descended from, or descended from Aaron. And yet, they followed and were able to keep all of the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. The burden was easy. They had it harder than you and I had it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Zechariah was one of the priests that did the sacrifices, and there's a lot more rules for that position on top of the regular rules to follow, and he was blameless. So the burden is easy if you accept the challenge. And I'll leave that with you and the Lord huh. this morning. It's a challenge to keep the Torah and to share it with those you come in contact with. Amen. 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 <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the apostle and bond servant Paul and everything that he wrote to try to bring the Torah and all the teachings that we find in the Old Testament, the Torah the prophets and the writings to life because they are applicable for today. They haven't gone away. Help us to share what we know with those who have no clue on the planet. Give us courage to do that. And give us willing ears that when we start a conversation, they're interested. Be with us, guide and direct us, speak to us when we read your word and study it, so that we can share with those that we come in contact with now and 